in my new room right now. Um, I got literally nothing in here besides just the chair that I'm sitting on and some you know little tables I'm using for this setup. Uh, but I should have everything up in here, you know what I mean, within a month, month and a half, month and a half, because I'm getting all new stuff. I'm getting a new bed, a uh, new desk, you know, new setup. I'm going to make this thing look real nice, um, and then I'll be able to record, you know, more easier. Uh, but I'm back. I'm, I wanted to get out a video just to let y'all know, but also wanted to talk about this before it got too late, and that's an NBA season recap. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some awards. I'm going to be talking about the playoffs a little bit of uh, the draft. We also got some free agency news that's happening, um, and I also want to do another one, like just going over full NBA free agency. Um, without further ado, let's get into it, man. Starting out with the NBA awards for this season, we got MVP with Joel Embiid, Defensive Player of the Year with Jaron Jackson Jr., the Rookie of the Year going to Paolo Bancaro, Most Improved Player going to Lori Markinen, uh, Coach of the Year with Mike Brown, and uh, Clutch Player. So as you can see as well, there was a new award, uh, you know, contemplated into this season, and that is Clutch Player of the Year going to De'Aaron Fox, uh, without a doubt. Um, I think he 100% deserved that. Kyrie and him were kind of going back and forth, but, you know, Kyrie ultimately ended up missing some games. Also, I feel like him, you know, switching teams also might have affected that a little bit. Um, but De'Aaron Fox, you know, well-deserved. Uh, but let's start out with the top, the MVP going to Joel Embiid. He finished second place in the past two years and finally got it this year. Um, I know a lot of people, you know, like to say that he didn't deserve it um, because of, you know, his playoff success and also what um, Nikola Jokic did in this, these playoffs. But, you know, I think, I, think, I think it's a fair award. I don't think anybody got robbed. I think at the end of the day, there were a lot of players that could have won it and a lot of players that definitely deserved it. And Joel Embiid was definitely one of them. Again, it's a regular season award. And, you know, he was really good in the regular season. The Sixers were, I believe, the three seed. So, you know, I have no problem with Joel Embiid um, getting his first uh, MVP award after finishing second in two straight years. Um, defensive Player of the Year going to Jaron Jackson Jr. Again, this was pretty much his award the whole year. I mean, there wasn't really anybody that you felt like had, like, a real legit shot, you know, at, at taking it away from him, at least for, for a heavy, you know, majority of the year. Um, and, you know, props to him, you know, Jaron Jackson Jr., one of the best defenders in the league, amazing at blocking shots. Um, so, yeah, he gets he gets his first and hopefully one of many defensive player of the years. Uh, rookie of the year to Paolo Bancaro. Again, this was one where it was pretty much a one-man race the whole year. There were definitely some rookies that stepped up and, you know, made a lot of plays, you know, talking about Benedict Matherin, uh, J. Dove from the Thunder, you know, but it, it was pretty much Paolo's award the whole year. I know uh, some people like to talk about his shooting splits compared to, like, some of the other rookies, uh, but, you know, he's the number one option on a really bad team, and he's a rookie, so he's going to shoot a lot of shots at the end of the day. That's, that's, that's what it is. He's also going to miss a lot, but, you know, he had a, he had a pretty good rookie year. I think he averaged, ended up averaging, like, 20. Um, so I think Paolo, you know, is going to end up being, you know, a, a multiple-time All-Star in his career. I think, you know, even as, even as soon as next year, I can see Paolo getting in there. Um, so, you know, a really, really great rookie year for him. Most improved going to Larry Markkinen, kind of, you know, out of nowhere. Um, he's actually serving overseas, if I'm not mistaken, um, from where he's from. I can't remember. But, um, you know, props to, props to Markkinen for doing that. But, yeah, this was just a... a really a breakout out of nowhere year for him um, and he was a baller man uh, made the all-star team in you know his hometown where he's playing at right now um, and he was a baller I think he averaged like what 25 points it was it was crazy um, there were definitely some other candidates that I could have seen having a legit shot like Jalen Brunson um, for example but I, I think Lori you know deserved it I would say more than him guys guys absolutely balled out, especially when you talk about Brunson going into the playoffs, even though, you know, it is a regular season award. Brunson had a great regular season and, you know, stepped up stepped up his play even in the playoffs. A uh, really, really great player for the Knicks and then a really great player for the Jazz who ends up winning that award. Um, Coach of the Year, Mike Brown. Again, just a just an amazing season from the Kings. You know, the longest playoff leave in sports history. Um, if 
if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, shout out to Mike Brown and the Sacramento Kings on a truly, truly great year. Uh, anyway, moving on to some playoff talk, starting out with the final seeding going into the playoffs. Out east from 1 to 8, it was the Bucks, Celtics, 76ers, Cavs, Knicks, Nets, Hawks, and Heat. And out west from 1 to 8 was the Nuggets, Grizzlies, Kings, Suns, Clippers, Warriors, Lakers, and Timberwolves. Um, so I, I'm not going to talk about every single playoff series, just some, you know, some key things that happen. So I guess we'll start out with the top dogs in the Denver Nuggets and the Miami Heat. Um, shout out to the Denver Nuggets on an absolutely amazing, dominant playoff run, um, led by, you know, arguably the best player in the NBA. I think a lot of people would have Nikola Jokic won. Um, I think it's really close between him and him and Giannis. But you know, if you got, you know, if you got Jokic won, I'm, uh, I can't tell you you're wrong. Um, he was absolutely amazing for the past, you know, three years back to back MVP, and then this year winning the championship and Finals MVP. After this season, you know, I think it's safe to say, you know, Jokic has, you know, put himself in that conversation for one of the greatest centers of all time. Uh, I saw a lot of talk after the championship about if, you know, Jokic is a top five center already. I don't know if I would go that far. I think it's really close. Um, but I think when it's all said and done, you know, I think he will he will be top three and eight. Maybe he's maybe he's top two. Maybe he's number one. Who who knows? Uh, but a great, you know, a great run for the Denver Nuggets and, you know, uh, uh, really, really cool to see them bring the championship home um, to Denver, who had never even been to an NBA Finals, let alone won one. Um, and going to the other side, the Miami Heat, an eighth seed, making it all the way to the finals. An absolute incredible Cinderella story. Um, you know, an underdog in every single series and, you know, made it all the way to the final, you know, and put up a good fight um, against, you know, the ultimate champions in the Denver Nuggets. Um, you know, and it was it was a, it was a great, great, you know, story for the Heat. I thought a lot of players stepped up. You know, Jimmy Butler had that amazing, amazing round one. I think he went for, what was it, 50? Six, I want to say 58. It was something like that against the Bucks, and that whole round one series, he was just incredible. Um, you know, his play definitely dipped down after that round one series, um, but he was still really solid, really consistent. And I think a lot of the other players on the Heat stepped up, where he didn't have to go out there and give them 40, you know, 50, 35 every single night. Um, so, like I said, a, a great, amazing run. Another uh, team I want to talk about, and this is more so on the disappointing side, and that's the 76ers. Um, I don't really know where they where they kind of go from here. You know, you have the MVP and Joel Embiid, and you know it hasn't really you know got you anywhere. Um, Joel Embiid has never in his career gotten past the second round. As I mentioned, he finished second in MVP the last two years and finally got his. So he has been top two in MVP the past three years. And it's led to nothing. Um, and the Sixers have had some really, really great teams. You know, you talk about the, the Jimmy Butler, J.J. Reddick, Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris, Joel Embiid team that got knocked out in the second round. You talk about even this year's team, James Harden, Tyrese Maxey, DeAnthony Melton, B.J. Tucker, Joel Embiid. They were, they were a solid, solid roster, bro. Any other year you look at, Joel Embiid has, has pretty much besides like maybe one maybe two years of his prime has had like a not you know really good team every single other year he has had you know a, a, a quote-unquote championship level team and they can't even get past the second round you know what I mean and Joel Embiid's play has dipped you know obviously some of it comes down to coaching some of it comes down to other players I'm not going to sit here and act like James Harden was amazing in that series against the Celtics because um, he basically had two, you know, amazing games, you know, stellar, I think, 40-point games. And then every other game, he was terrible. Like, literally, I, I think the only two games that he was good, he was, like, that good. It was, like, prime James Harden type stuff. Um, so I'm not going to say it's all on Joel. But, you know, in, in that game six against the Celtics that they lost, when I think they were up in the fourth quarter, and I, I don't even think Joel Embiid scored or something like that in the fourth quarter. It's... It's, you know, it's upsetting to see. It's upsetting to see a great player like this, and he just he dips heavily in the playoffs. Um, and I think, honestly, the, 
Denver Nuggets winning the championship might have been the worst thing to happen to the Sixers because I think the Sixers organization is going to look at that and say, hey, the Nuggets just won a championship with their best player as their center. We have the MVP on our team that's a center, so we think we can do that as well. When they're two completely different players, and I'm going to be honest, I, I don't know if I see a championship in Joel Embiid's future unless the team is, like, perfect. Like, there's just a perfect team around him. He has another co-star that's able to step up when he's not. He has, you know, you know, amazing 45% three-point shooters around him. He has a six-man-of-the-year type player that can come off the bench. He has a backup center that can try to relieve some pressure off him. You know what I mean? It almost feels like Joel Embiid needs everything right for him to be able to get where he should, and that's being in an NBA Finals and winning one. You know what I mean? Um, he's about to turn 30 here, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, he doesn't have his prime for that much longer. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the 76ers can, you know, make some moves and Joel Embiid can ultimately, you know, take that next step once he gets into that playoffs. But, you know, it's upsetting to see. Um, and kind of the same thing with the team that beat the 76ers and the Celtics. Uh, you know, nearly the team that came back down from, from 0-3. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think the Celtics were looked at by a lot of people to be the favorite to go win the championship. And they nearly got swept obviously made it a seven game series but uh, but I, I, I still think it's a little bit a little bit disappointing it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the Celtics this offseason obviously a little bit of free agency talk that we'll get to involving them um, but it's interesting to see what happens with Jalen Brown I'm you know I'm pretty positive he's going to get the max extension uh, but you know I'm, I'm excited to see where their future what their future holds and you know if they can ultimately you know bring home that championship expect Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, you know, um, to be able to lead them to my final team. I want to talk a little bit about from the playoffs is my team, the Lakers. Um, you know, I think in all, it was a great season, um, starting out two and 10, you know, basically dismantling your team at the trade deadline and making it all the way to the Western conference finals is something that's never been done. You know, no team has ever started two and 10 and made it that far. I don't even know if a team has started two and 10 and made the playoffs and we made it to the Western Conference Finals. Now, obviously, ultimately, we got swept. I think, you know, we, we put up a good fight. I think it was a competitive four-game series. But at the end of the day, the Nuggets were a better team. Uh, I am hoping that, you know, the Lakers can make some moves that can improve this team and potentially get them back, you know, into, you know, title contention once again. Uh, but, you know, we don't really have much years. You know, LeBron, obviously, you saw that, you know, his age is definitely catching up. Obviously, in that game four, he was incredible uh, for that for that first half. But, you know, you can definitely see that his body and his game is not the same as it once was. You know, he's 38 years old, I believe, and he, he doesn't have much, much left. You know, he probably only has, you know, maybe two, maybe three more years, maybe even one more year. We, we, we really never know. Um, Anthony Davis sometimes is the best player in the world, and sometimes he looks unplayable. It's really, really weird with him. Um, but as I said, I think it was a successful season for the Lakers. I, I, I do hope we make some moves. I hope my, my dream scenarios were able to finally make that trade with the Pacers for potentially Buddy Heald. I know a lot of people talk about getting Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. I think that's you know, pretty unrealistic. Um, but I, I hope the Lakers do make some changes to you know relieve some pressure off their top players and get some you know, legit great shooters around them. You know, you talk about Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura uh, entering free agency as well. Hopefully we can bring both of those guys back. And, you know, I think the Lakers got a good shot to make some noise next year. Anyway, moving on to some NBA draft talk. Now, I will say when it comes to the NBA, I'm definitely more of an NFL guy. The NBA is kind of like my, my second favorite sport in a way, but I'm still real in tune. I'm still always watching games, but one part that I'm not really too in tune with is um, college basketball and you know prospects coming into the NBA draft now this year I was probably like really only familiar with like like five or six guys like not a lot of people I, I know the name but as far as like being familiar watching games stuff like that um, so let's get into it uh, starting out with the top three of this draft obviously was a big discussion going into it with Victor Webinyama, Scoot Anderson, and Brandon Miller. Obviously, Victor being, you know, one of the greatest prospects we've ever seen in the NBA, and he ultimately did go number one to the Spurs, and, you know, just really put him in a great position to succeed, you know, with some great mentors.
Victor's a great coach, a great organization, and I think, you know, I think Victor's going to be a really, really great player. You know, do we know what his future holds in terms of all this, you know, all-time great talk? You know, we got to just wait and see what the kid does. I think he's going to be special. I think he's going to be a great player, but we got to stop putting all these crazy expectations on these players, man. Just let them go out there and hope, you know what I mean? Um, and I wouldn't say necessarily like a, a shock in the draft, but Brandon Miller did go too to the Hornets. I think a lot of people probably looked at Brandon Miller as the third best player in this draft. And in my opinion, would I have drafted Brandon Miller at two? You know, probably not because I'm a big guy on, you know, best player available, especially when your team is really bad. And that's what the Hornets have. And I do think that LaMelo Ball and Scoot Anderson could play together. Now, you'd probably say Brandon Miller is a much better fit. But, you know, that's kind of like the whole LaMelo Ball situation as well with the Warriors. Um, the Warriors drafted James Wiseman. And he was off their team, what, two years later. And LaMelo Ball turned out to be an all-star. Now, is LaMelo Ball an all-star with the Warriors? Probably not. But he's probably like a, a better Jordan Poole. Like what Jordan Poole was for them, he's probably like, you know, a better version of that off the bench. Uh, so it's kind of like that situation. I'm not saying that's what it's going to be, but that's what it feels like. I do think Brandon Miller is going to be a really great player. But I think Scoot is going to be even that much better. Now, I will say for the Trailblazers, if they want to start that rebuild and trade Dame, I would do it 1 million percent, especially when you get a player like Scoot Henderson who can be a legit all-star, all-NBA type player. I think 100 percent you got to start because if they if they were going to try to go down the direction to build around Dame and win a championship, they should have traded the number three pick for uh, some type of all-star level player, especially when Scoot fell. I would have 100% traded it if you're trying to look to actually compete. But in my opinion, I think they should trade Dame and go into that full rebuild and, you know, have Scoot as that, that real, real building block. I think that's amazing. Uh, and then at four and five, we ended up having the brothers go back to back and Ahmed, or I think it's Amen and Asar Thompson, uh, two guys that came from OTE Elite. Um, I think it was what? I think it was the top four picks all came from different places. It was um, Victor with the overseas. Um, it was Brandon Miller with college. It was Scoot Anderson with the G League. And then it was Ahmed Thompson with OTE. And that's, you know, that's great to see, you know, a lot of different outlets for basketball players to do to ultimately, you know, make it to the league. And I, I think that's, you know, I think that's great to see. Um, and my last little note that I want to talk about from the NBA draft is uh, Cam Whitmore falling all the way to, I believe, 20 to the Rockets. And that's a, that's a big time steal. As I said, I wasn't too familiar with a lot of names from this draft, but Cam Whitmore was one of them. And I believe he fell mainly due to injury concern or something like that. But I, I think the Rockets are set up for success, man. And, you know, three years from now, four years, you know, I think the Rockets are going to be a legit team that's going to be contending year in and year out with this young talent. I mean, they just, they have a, a star-studded young team, and I can't, I can't wait to see them play this season. That's definitely a team I'm going to be tuning into um, a lot. And to finish us out here, I'm going to talk a little bit about some free agency. Um, so starting us out, Chris Paul was traded from the Suns to the Wizards for Bradley Beal, and then was traded to the Warriors for Jordan Poole. Um, a little bit of a crazy, crazy sequence going on. I'll talk about um, uh, all sides from that. Uh, starting out with the Suns, I think a lot of people kind of were like, oh, why are the Suns doing it? Oh, they have no depth and stuff like that. It's like the Suns didn't like give up their depth to get Bradley Beal. They, they gave up Chris Paul and Landry Shaman. So I, I didn't really get that whole part from them. Obviously, the Suns don't have depth. I get that. Um, but also, they have Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and now Bradley Beal. Um, so their offensive firepower is legit. I think that right now, they're probably the favorite out west. Um, and I think they will be able to bring in some solid pieces off their bench, um, especially if they look to trade DeAndre Ayton. If they can get a solid two-for-one back for Ayton, I don't know what Ayton's um, trade value is at this point. I would assume, you know, it's not that great. But, you know, we'll have to see. But I really don't mind it for the Suns. I do think, in my opinion, they're probably the favorite out west with that much offensive firepower. Um, and for the Wizards, 
wizards. You know, they also moved off Porzingis, which I'll talk about, but they, that big one here is moving off Bradley Beal. And at the end of the day, they're not getting back a whole lot of crazy pieces or all these super valuable first round picks. A lot of them, if I'm not mistaken, were protected, but they moved off a lot of huge contracts that they just didn't need. And this was, you know, way overdue for the wizards. They should have been in this rebuilding stage years ago. And they should have never gave Bradley Beal that super max and no trade clause, this and that. It it really hurt their future and hurt their, their rebuild. Um, so it's it's good to see the Wizards kind of go all out for this rebuild. And like I said, should have been something that started years ago. But good to see them doing that now. Um, and CP3 to the Warriors, you know, it's a it's an it's an interesting move. Um, I would assume he's gonna come off the bench. Um, and you know, it's it's a pretty good six man if I do say so. One of the greatest point guards of all time. Obviously, he's not in his prime or even close to that. But I think he can still be a really big contributor to a team like the Warriors, who is still trying to compete. I mean, Steph is still in his prime, so I wouldn't doubt that the Warriors are going to be a team that's that's you know competing for that championship next year. And CP3 off the bench um, really helps out that team for sure. Um, and the second and last trade I'm going to talk about. Was Porzingis to the Celtics, Marcus Smart to the Grizzlies, and Tyus Jones to the Wizards. And obviously, the big one of this is Kristaps Porzingis going to the Celtics. Um, the Celtics coming off, you know, a Eastern Conference Finals loss, and they, you know, they're getting a lot better. Um, their 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 biggest need was that big man spot. Um, and when you can, you know, basically replace Al Horford with Kristaps Porzingis, who was in All Star talks last year. That's a, that's a pretty big upgrade. You know, they had a lot of guards last year, um, so they picked up, you know, a big man um, in, in Chris Stapps. And I think I think two teams after these trades turned themselves into the favorites in each conference. I think the Suns are the favorites out west, and I think the Celtics are the favorites out east. That's just my personal opinion. I think it's a great move for the Celtics, and I think it makes them that much better. Um, the Marcus, uh, the Grizzlies, geez, uh, trading for is smart I, you know i think it's a pretty good pickup you know you put a real solid defensive player next to you know your superstar and john moran who um i guess uh, i should have mentioned that as well got suspended for 25 games for you know some ridiculous stuff that he was doing i i probably think it should have been you know a little bit longer maybe like half the season but um you know adam silver was hyping that up to be like he was about to suspend him for the whole season and it was you know only 25 games but anyway, uh, Marcus Smart to the Grizzlies, like I said, a solid pickup. Tyus Jones to the Wizards, you know, nothing crazy. I don't think it's going to shake up the league, but just some some moves that were made. Uh, Tyus Jones, one of the most underrated point guards and players in the league. Um, so, you know, the Wiz- Wizards making a little bit of moves. They're still kind of staying competitive, even though they're kind of going into like this little bit of a rebuild. Um, so, yeah, that's my whole NBA talk. soon once I finally get set up um, in this room and you know one of them is going to be once NBA free agency is all wrapped up I'm gonna do a video talking about all that as well so if that's something you're interested in man hit the like button and hit the subscribe button that's gonna do it for me man I'm out